today's video is on AIS on a shoestring. So it's basically be able to see and show your own boat to other boats. Kind of like radar, but sort of using radio frequency. So it can transmit your position on other boats positions and everybody can receive and see where other boats are. A uh, good safety thing, especially if you're offshore, sort of doing a passage um, overnight and things like that there, fog where you might see other things. Um, it's obviously a lot cheaper than radar. Um, and today I'm going to show some of the shoestring options that I've picked up um, that hopefully help you out that there. Uh, first up is this. This came from AliExpress. It's actually, a, it's sold as a net finder, but it actually is an AI transponder that you can program. Um, it's portable. So as you can see, it's got a battery built into it and I'll go over the technical of, uh, later, but I've got some of the schematics and things I got there and what's actually in it uh, from another website where a guy broke it down. Um, if you open this, you can see, it's just a simple case to turn it on. So basically now you put this back on, tie it onto the back of your boat. Um, the other thing is you can actually tie it onto yourself. So if you were sort of sailing um, you know, on your own or something like that there and didn't have, you know, some of the other more expensive, uh, you know, the ones with the limited batteries. Um, you can have this tied onto yourself, sorry, onto your life jacket or something like that there. So if you fell in, basically it would transmit for up to 10 miles. So also in your dinghy, if you write things like that there. So instead of having like a fixed thing in your, your boat, yes, it won't transmit as far, but um, it's portable, so it can go anywhere. Um, so I'll actually show this in action. So what I'll do is, there's two parts to this video so this is obviously the, the transmitter so this actually shows your position and uh, the other half will be the receiver and how we do that in the cheap um but yes this came from aliexpress i'll stick the link down below and um, it's called uh netfinder st something or another um it's waterproof ipx7 and um, comes with instructions comes with a charger cable uh, with a wee chinese adapter uh, for the uk uh, and you can pay extra. I got the data cable. Uh, what I'll show next is how you can actually program this. So if you know MM, or sorry AIS, you'll know each boat has, if you've got your VHF radio certification, uh, each boat should have a MMSI number. Um, you can actually program this into this for your boat. So basically then that will transmit your MMSI. You can also program in your boat length, um, what type of boat it is, like a 36 for a sailing vessel, stuff like that there. So I'm gonna show all that there later on. Um, but yes, it's a Socotran ST109M and it's technically a net locator, um, but it is an AIS transmitter. So for our purpose, for I think I paid 65 quid. Uh, so it's dirt cheap for, for what you can use it for. Right, what we'll do now is we'll show the hooked up to the laptop and then different settings we can set on there. Hopefully this works. Um, what we've got here is basically the device. What we'll do is open it. Hopefully this can be seen. And then we plug it in. So there's basically a small and a large. One for data, one for power, because one's used for charging as well. So the smaller one hangs for the data. Um, so we plug it in. Ding, ding, ding. Um, so let's have a look here. Okay, so if we double click the application, um, you'll get some information here. So if we do read, hopefully this will work. Okay, could not find that. So if I turn it on and then do read, it says read the data successfully. So then this is all the default stuff. Uh, so you can see the TX timer. So that basically says it actually sends your location out every two minutes. So let's just change that to every one minute because uh, I'll make life a bit easier later on whenever we're trying to see the NEMA information for the receiver. And uh, the extended information, so let's say 36. Um, and the reason why I want to use 36 is I had a look on... Uh, yeah, so marine traffic, so we can kind of see here the different types. So if you reference this, I'll stick a link down below as well. Um, but 36 sailing vessel, so yes, mine's a sailing vessel, so I will put 36 in. Uh, you call sign, 
MMSI, so that was the MSI number. You'll obviously have that for your own boat. You can plug in your own here. Uh, same for name, that seems to be the default there. Uh, these are your reference points. So basically points in your boat. So the, the four aft uh, port starboard. Uh, and then that kind of gives you your your axle sort of from the center of the boat. So these basically is how far forward, how far back, how far port, how far starboard. So that gives you your length and width. So if you sort of say your AIS is in the middle, then it kind of figures out the length of your boat. Um, so we can then just simply write those. So whenever we check later on, uh, we should be able to see that information. So what we'll do is, uh, just so we can kind of see, um, we'll do, So we write that, we'll see how that appears on the IIS. Now I'm in the middle of the sticks, so I don't think anybody should pick this up outside. It's five watt, goes for about 10 miles. Uh, I'm not near 10 miles near any water. So uh, for testing purposes, this should be okay. Um, so yeah, you can kind of see this very easy to use. Uh, you can obviously go up to 30 seconds if you want, or you can change it if you want uh, longer. Obviously the longer it goes, uh, the better it is. Uh, the battery life is a couple of days. Um, and you know obviously lasts longer the, the less you're transmitting so very useful on a boat sorry as you can see it's very easy to set up and uh, i've actually got this other link so if you don't have a windows machine there's this guy has created a python script for it so it runs on other other devices such as um linux and things like that there mac books and other stuff it also gives a teardown so if you take a look here um so you can kind of see the insides and all the cool stuff. Uh, seems to be quite basic. Two, basically two um, 18, 650 batteries, uh, charger, and all the radio stuff all built in. So, and GPS obviously as well. Uh, so rather, rather good for 60 quid. Um, I'll stick a link down to this below. Uh, AliExpress, you can pick these up quite cheaply. Um, time of writing I think it's about 65 quid and um, obviously things go up and down with currency changes but that's what it is at the moment um, okay we'll just go over back to normal and actually go over some of the specs and how long it lasts and things like that there yeah so that gives you a pretty brief overview and um, what I'm going to do now is charge it up to max and then go and stick it outside and basically see how long it lasts. Apparently given the bump uh, last 15 days, I guess that uh, could be depend on how often you're transmitting your position. Uh, as I say, I've set this to one minute. Um, so I'll charge up to full. Once it's full, we'll take it outside, leave it outside so it's GPS position. We can then track it uh, on the, the AIS receiver. Uh, and that's the next part coming up. Okay, so this is a RTL SDR uh, V3 Pro, and you can get these quite cheap on AliExpress, stick the link down below. Um, what this is, is basically a software defined radio, so it basically can receive radio signals as long as you've got an antenna. Um, I'm gonna fudge it for this. I've got a Beofang, so obviously you've seen my other videos with my UV5R. Um, these things have an SMA connector, so you can probably get an adapter for other types of radio. Um, I'm just gonna use this SMA to SMA because uh, the other ones are male, so I've got like a, a female to, male to male. So um, what the plan is now, we'll go over on the computer, show the different software. Um, I'm using a thing called AIS Capture and OpenCPN. I have another video on OpenCPN where I've got maps and things like this. Um, but today we're just trying to show that how positioning, and for this, obviously I'm just gonna show the position of where I am based on the, trans, the transmitter that we will had showed previously. Um, but I'll show you how to set this up. Um, I'll stick the files down below. There's a batch file, basically I used to run it, um, but we'll go through the config settings, what things do, and show the data coming through, and show you where I am. Now, I'll not be shooting the map, so you'll not actually know where I am, um, but you'll actually see sort of the details and things I got there. Now is install our S RTL SDR V3 Pro, so pretty easy. I've already the drivers installed. Um, there's a bit of work you need to do to. I'll stick a link down below. Um, there's a good guide on OpenCPN. So basically, um, you download 
the SDR Sharp, which is free download. Um, I'll, there's a link on here. Um, and then you need to basically run this Zadig, basically change the drivers for these two bulk input devices, um, which then should follow, as you can see on my screen. Um, yeah, so after we've plugged it in, if you follow the instructions here on the S, uh, sorry, the OpenCPN, I'll stick a link down below. It's got a good guide on the wiki for AIS software. So what we'll do here is um, just follow these here. So it's, if you've got Windows 10 like I have, so you just go to here, use the Zadig, which changes the drivers, uh, and then you can do follow these different stuff for setting the gains and things like that there for the frequencies. Now the problem here is the AIS Deco 2 that it lists doesn't actually work. Um, but the rest of the stuff does. What we'll do is show you another uh, piece of software, uh, AIS Catcher. Um, so I've been playing about that this morning and it works quite well. Uh, it works with OpenCPN, uh, which is obviously a mapping software or sort of the chart plotter type of thing. Uh, so what we'll do is go ahead and show AIS Catcher. So basically, if we take a look, then the instructions is all these different command lines. So what we'll do is create a batch file. There's already one here and uh, it comes with it and you can edit that. Um, so these are the different settings. Um, ultimately, you can read through this. I'll stick a link down below. Um, but all we want to do is quickly show, show it working. So if we have this start.bat and if I bring that over here, what it does now is basically should send out every 10 seconds, basically an update, but it'll actually, oh, there's another, yep. Okay, so we can see the messages coming up now on the screen. Um, total three messages received. Okay, so if we let that keep running, um, we'll see how it gets on. What we'll do now is go into OpenCPN. So what we should see is messages coming through every minute. Now we need to go into OpenCPN and just double check the settings in here. So we'll let that run in the background. Uh, if we go into settings here, uh, connections, um, and then you can add connection. So if you've added a connection, then you should basically network UDP 127.001. And then this here, which I think maybe has changed. Uh, yep, yeah, so it's 1110. So if we change it here, um, da, 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 you can pick all that there. So do not worry about that. So we hit OK. Um, and then we shall wait. So if we actually go in here, quite a useful feature is the NEMA debug window. So this will actually show us if anything's actually coming through or not. Um, so hit apply, hit OK. So this stays here. Having any uh, maps installed, but if you check out the other videos, you can see how you can get uh, cheap uh, sort of chart plotter type maps here into OpenCPN. I'm not going to, there's 101 tutorials in OpenCPN itself, I'm not going to go into that detail. Um, but I think this AIS stuff is pretty cool, um, especially the AIS catcher because obviously a lot of the, the things. Oh, there's a way, there we go. So now we see our actual boat, and if we take a look, see that BO. 12999 uh, and that was our information we put so if we take a look at the time that is 142612 um so let's have a look wait and see we should see one again and about well, 27 or thereabouts so you can kind of see my location if we were out miss yeah so if we double click it So as you can see, sailing vessel, and we haven't actually checked, changed anything else. So it's class B, so it's fine. We haven't actually put the length and things. So if we change the settings there, we could have changed that and we could change the MMSI. Um, we could also change the, the length and width. So you could actually put in the, the actual correct length. So if you basically say you're running half and half, then basically just if you have a 24 foot boot, you'd have done 12 and 12 and then worked out your beam. 
Um, so yeah, we can kind of see here, yep, yeah, 2709. So we can kind of see these three messages that have came through. Um, and then we see the report age updating. Now it said speed not, so that's just because of the, the GPS drift. Uh, obviously that will get better over time. Uh, 0.4 knots, it's kind of just sitting outside as we can see. Um, so yeah, so that, that's basically AI us up and running. So we can basically see if we had that connected onto our boat that you would be seen. Yep, so just going out here to check it now. And as you can see, Hopefully in a wee second or two, it should start flashing. It sends about every minute, so I think basically what happens is it'll go red, and then it'll go green, and then flash while it's sending. I think it sends about three or four pulses. There we go. Boom, and that's it. It's actually the wrong way around. It was green and then thing. So you can see, you can see the water was sitting on it. That's been out sitting out there in the rain from uh, from Saturday, and it's now Thursday. So let's go ahead and check it. So I have the net locator hooked up. So just starting it up now and run the settings. So we read. Hopefully it works. Excellent. So if we take a look at the vendor num, it's at 60. So there's at 60%. Um, so that's Cracker. Uh, so that's 60% after, uh, sorry, 60% after Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So five days. So you're talking, well, it said 15 days. So you're going to get over 10 days anyway. So yeah, definitely you can get AIS in the cheap. Uh, it works very well for me. Um, obviously, I don't be offshore that much, so I haven't much in practice. Uh, but I th especially think this Socotran device is quite useful. Uh, I actually think it'd be something you should really have on your person. Um, so then if you went over, rather than finding the boat, it would find you. Um, 10 miles, uh, apparently the 5 watt go 10 miles. Um, and obviously, we've seen the battery life previously there. Uh, seems to be very good. And the SDR receiver, yep, yeah, works well and um, picks up the signals from this. So I'm assuming it picks up the signals from other things. Um, yep, yeah, so thumbs up from me. Uh, so if you like this video and want to see other sort of shoestring, techy, sailing things, um, yeah, check out my other videos. Give us a give the video a like and click subscribe. Um, yeah, but thanks for watching. Hope to see you all again soon. Cheerio. Bye.